Radio. I go lie, I call it was my favorite show of all time though. Like no funny shit. I don't yo, you know, you know what I Carly did, bro? Bro, I call yo, do you know how let me tell you how iconic it was. First off, look at the laptop. Nigga, I Carly invented uh fucking MacBooks and iPhones. Let's start there. I Carly invented Apple, nigga. They also started a wave of influencers, streamers, YouTubers, nigga, all so that shit. What the fuck is your dumbass talking about? What do you mean? What am I talking about, nigga? Nigga, Apple was out Apple way was before I. No, 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 right. nigga, I'm talking about the, the shit that you could do on the shit, though, game. Bro, what? Are you trolling? I'm not trolling. Wait, yo. Nigga, the shit that they were you doing know? in the show with pair pods. Remember, I think they were called pair pods, right? Nigga, Zoe 101 that... had all that shit. Nah. No. And who do you think Zoe 101 was made by? The same nigga. Bro. <laughs> yeah, all but you show. see, no, my no. Carly started it. Yo, bro. I'm True. Tell you already, bro. But then look. All right, so what about streaming on YouTube? Like, that was a thing. Was what? At... what about yeah. streaming and YouTube, nigga? They made that shit. They made every. They they made niggas want to be influencers, bro. Okay, you can say, facts. You can say that. Okay, I can That's see that. facts, bro. I can see that. I can see that. Not, you can definitely say that. That's I didn't facts, know what bro. Carly, was. That was my first. Our Carly was like low key like a thing that introduced like the. I feel like introduced the internet to kids. They ain't start streaming, but yeah, like, yeah. I Carly introduced the internet to no, kids. I Carly, they was live streaming. Nah, dead ass. They introduced the internet to kids, bro. I mean, younger like the audience. Can I stream real quick? Why? What happened? Nickelodeon was in a true golden era for children's programming. Shows like Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, Victorious, and iCarly permeated. The Zoe 101 was on Nickelodeon. Why well, I thought that was on Disney? Am I slow? No, I was on Nickelodeon. No, was on Nickelodeon. The channel and filled all the live action spots the TV Guide had to offer. These shows raised entire generations of young adults who grew up with the antics of. Yeah, Carly what's better, Nickelodeon or Disney Channel? Time weeknight. I go live. That golden era of children's programming is largely I think painted Disney. by its very Bro, own creator, a weekly place? Dan Schneider. Where nah, nah, but not. Nah, but in children's looking network for. empire, Dan Schneider would become bro. one of the most powerful yeah, and allegedly and fairly shadiest apparent. producers yeah. in not only oh, children's television, apparent. but all of Hollywood. Cartoons, From its inception, Rush. Schneider's Bakery has been swarming with some of the most salacious and unbelievable rumors we've ever heard. So today, we are going back to the year Nick 2007 oh, yeah, to the Tunes. rainy streets of Seattle at the fictional Bushel Plaza as we tell yeah, the Nick terrifying Tunes. and electrifying true tale of the hit TV show, iCarly. Miranda Cosgrove is that was website still a thing? What website? iCarly.com, only we would have found that right. Oh wow, it is still a website. Well, they just changed it to Nickelodeon shit, but. Yo, so I, 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 I hope you know Nickelodeon is done after this, they're cooked. She was belting her heart out at the restaurant Taste of LA. She immediately got signed to an agency and performed in a McDonald's and Mellow Yellow commercial. But her real breakout wasn't until she started auditioning for movies and TV shows. Her first big TV break was in 2001 for the pilot of the hit television show Smallville. But her first big break on the big screen was alongside Jack Black in the hit good, movie School of Rock. Morning, School of Rock are Groupie? What's the matter? You want me to be a groupie? Well, groupie's an important job. What the I fuck? I research groupies on the internet. They're sluts. They sleep with a band. This is where she would- What the fuck? <laughs> that was all in there? What happened? Bro, why did we never catch this shit when we was younger, bro? <laughs> Yo, Jack. What the fuck? Wait, what? What happened? This wasn't a kid movie, bro. This was a movie. But that's not yeah, that's not. They said it wasn't a kid movie. Still, why? She like eight. Why they got her saying that shit? Bro, they got kids cussing in hell movies. Portray a snarky young girl with multiple layers. Nickelodeon and more importantly Dan Schneider would take note of this character and make Miranda a pivotal role in the, in the golden age of Nigga. Nickelodeon. As she would be what? one of the few stars to not only portray one iconic character, but two polar opposite characters that each would make a bigger impact than the one before. Megan, the mischievous little sister of Drake and Josh Parker, who would pull pranks on them all day long. And Carly, a junior high schooler who teams up with her friends Sam and Freddie to 
star a web show, the happy go lucky blueprint for the modern day influencer. But how did she get cast on Drake and Josh? Well, there actually isn't a ton of public information on Miranda's casting. However, the Nickelodeon casting process no, has been got shrouded in mystery and mystique for She's years, getting fucking being allegedly much more off the books than the Disney casting process. Stories of underage pool parties where children are told to dress skimpily Whoa. to get cast have plagued the, the network fuck? for years. There is a methodical separating of the children from the parents, and it's all very pre-planned. They bring you to this place called Oakwood Apartments out there by Burbank. Kids have their own spot. The parents have their own spot. They tell the parents, like, look, man, the kids are going to have dialogue coaches all day and then doing this and filming sketches and makeup. So he has a little, he has a little stipend. He has a little cash. Whoa. Parents go out and have some like fun, the, and then they begin to oh, treat these the kids like adults. You know, give them a little booze and give them a little, you know, smoke a little pot with them. And they would tell these teens and preteens, you know, you want to be out there hanging out in your bikinis because that's how girls are, you know, found in the industry. But as always with Nickelodeon, there is far more than meets the eye. Now, I want to start this chapter with a bit of a status update on where Children's Network Television was at this time. Because iCarly's impact is fascinating. Well, TV was so least. good so back the there. Niggas don't even watch TV YouTube no more. Had just been watch TV? One year prior, and the iPhone TV had barely made its way off the Cupertino <laughs> stage. TV was so good the back hands there. Of billions of consumers. Yeah, niggas had WWE the world was changing back then very was quickly, popular. and TV shows were falling behind. As the acceleration of fashion, technology, and pop culture in general began to ramp up to a speed the world had never seen Benji, before. Murmurings of Jamie Lynn Spears' pregnancy were oh also God. beginning to spread across Nickelodeon's network, and both Zoe 101 and Drake and Josh were coming to their natural ends if they didn't have a public demise first. This put the Nickelodeon network in a bit of an identity crisis, because in the past, the network usually had at least two live action shows running at once, but both of them were ending. This left a gaping hole in their programming, and Dan Schneider had to think quickly. Disney was gearing up to launch their brand new Star this is the Gomez, only place. and they already had booming success. That show was with a that banger, show bro. In Hannah Montana okay. the year prior. Nickelodeon knew it was time to act quickly and to release a show that would not only pull attention from every single one of these hit shows, but revolutionize the way children view so and interact ran Disney? with technology. No, she did. You see, during the production of Zoe 101, Dan Schneider dreamt up the concept of a web show produced by kids being the premise of a new sitcom. In the final seasons of Zoe 101, one, whether it was a Jet X or a pair book, the Schneider's Bakery team was always utilizing, dreaming up, and even innovating mock technology for Chase, Dana, Quinn, Nicole, Michael, and Zoe to use to propel their storyline. Nickelodeon was creating aspirational lifestyles to showcase on screen, like texting all your friends at your fancy boarding school on your tech mate that you'll meet them at the sushi bar on your Jet X in an hour. But Dan wanted to take this concept even further and create a fully immersive storyline like that, that truly fit the 21st old ass century. Shows. I watched only one on one, but that was it. Of children that were to come. All them older, older shows, shows like, I ain't gonna lie, I seen a couple kids in the account, but I wasn't that interactive TV shit. show that focused around friends Sam and Kira launching their very own web show. However, the story goes that Dan Schneider was attempting to get the URL for iSam, and it was actually already taken. Then he tried iJosie, and that was also taken. Finally, they settled on the URL that they were able to right. land. The fabulous, the memorable, I and iconic I I probably sound better While the than Disney Channel is rather known for manicuring yeah. aspirational lifestyles for their stars, whether it be their shows or not, that all lead to Hollywood and Disney being the ones that make their dreams, quote, Cut, come true, taken. Nickelodeon was never the same, and really only had a few flukes where the stars went on to be as successful as their Disney counterparts. Well, Miranda Cosgrove revealed that iCarly was meant to follow a very similar rubric to Sunny with a Chance with Demi Lovato. And y'all, this is Sunny with a Chance? Listen to this description. Sunny with a Chance is low-key uh, uh, fire too, though. I ain't gonna lie. She said, when they came to me and asked me to do the show iCarly, I didn't chance understand. Originally, the character Carly was supposed to get cast on a TV show, and she becomes famous from being on a TV show. But she's just this regular person that this casting director sees her and picks her and puts her on a show. They were like, let's make it a web show. Like last minute, they switched it. And it was funny because back then, I didn't even know what a web show was. I was like, a TV show would make so much more sense 
sense to me. I don't get this whole web show. Now, that's I what streaming is now. The TV show Miranda is describing <laughs> actually isn't iCarly at all. Before iCarly in 2006, Dan Schneider wrote a pilot for a TV show called Starstruck. The original idea for the show was that Miranda Cosgrove plays a normal girl who, in a twist of fate, gets cast to star in her favorite TV show called Starstruck. That now, this asked. sounds familiar, it's because the Disney Channel would go on to seemingly rip off this concept in multiple ways. First, oh, just oh, having I a movie that. three years later flat out called Starstruck with the same premise. And second, this, this is the plot yeah, I remember Star Star Struck? I don't remember that And shit. Sterling Knight is in both it was of the shows, movie. I don't know. The only connect I've ever been able to find What's between Dan Schneider and Disney shit? is convicted Brian Peck. And some murmurings of the Disney movies. Channel ordering a Schneider's shit. Bakery show, but nothing public ever came out of this. So whether Disney purchased the concept or just ripped it will forever remain a mystery. Anyway, Starstruck would be completely scrapped in favor of the new show iCarly. iCarly was revamped into the most futuristic kids television show of the 2000s and would truly prophesy the gigantic influencer boom of the 2010s. Y'all, I can actually speak from experience here. I was six years old when iCarly premiered and I remember rushing to my little TV in the basement with Annie and Sammy watching the first episode and having like a gear click in my mind. You know what's like, so crazy? I don't I think I ever watched the first episode show, of none of these shows. Can have so many I didn't even know how the fuck they started. I just started watching it in the middle. And drama and awards. Yeah. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Y'all remember how these shit? I don't remember how these shit started. I did that shit. Yo, Quan, thank you for the uh, resale. Exclamation point seven out of the stream. Two kids like Carly, Sam, and Freddie set up that. I'm not gonna lie. I think total drama. I don't care what their friends at school thought. And stream all night was a ludicrous concept for the time. Like you heard Miranda Cosgrove say, it was a completely foreign concept to her at the time of her cast. Thing. However, that was a movie iCarly too, right? definitely caught the cusp of the technological boom. That decision to transform iCarly from a TV show to a web show changed the course of history. Now, iCarly went into production in January of 2007, right around the time Drake and Josh wrapped filming their final season. But before the final Drake and Josh project, Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh, which funny enough was actually filmed after iCarly had already started airing. So it's the only time Miranda Cosgrove reprises her role of Megan after iCarly premiered. Now, Drake and Josh aired their final episode on September 16th, 2007, airing with numerous commercial promos that was mad of Miranda long Cosgrove ago, like, and Drake Bell was, recording a song together no. titled I was in middle school, bro. From hey, Miranda Cosgrove here. I'm recording a new song maybe. for my new show, iCarly, and it's been a lot of hard work, so I hope you guys like it. And it's so real. Cool. That's a good ass intro song. I'm telling you this how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I know. This I is so calm. That's just so calm, bro. Victorious, and we have an entire video about that already, so be sure to check that out. So, Miranda Cosgrove films the final season of Drake and Josh and the first season of iCarly back to back. And there would even be a month of overlap where iCarly would premiere its first episodes and Drake and Josh was airing its final. There was never a gap of Miranda Cosgrove on Nickelodeon. She was consistently on screen Not every day single night. Yo, now, yo, yo Miranda Cosgrove Miranda ran Cosgrove Nickelodeon, and nigga. After Carly Shay, no, Dan Schneider. She ran said Nickelodeon. Time, quote, I was looking for someone to play Sean, it thank cool you for and be wise beyond her years. It's been real fun to watch Miranda hit that dead on. Also, she's a beautiful girl with amazing features, a doll Whoa. to look at. Oh, what I hate how Dan Schneider describes Whoa. girls as gross. Why do I say it like that? On. Also, she's a beautiful girl with amazing features, a doll to look at. Oh, a doll I hate the way Dan Schneider at. describes girls. It's gross. Mm, Continuing on, weird. another thing, she's very classy. That's unusual in a little kid. The poise and the way she carries herself. On September 7th, iCarly would air to over 4.1 Ew, wait, what the fuck? I saw that. <laughs> the same day would air to 3.9 million Bob, viewers. For the 30 it months. was clear, yeah. iCarly was a smash hit. Luck so much for the so months. that over 2,000 kids headed to to iCarly.com to submit their weird talents to a real, actual functioning website. However, while this made iCarly way more interactive, it highlights a major Damn issue body. in Schneider's like, what the Bakery fuck? as a whole. Huh? 
Well, yeah, I've seen some shit that said the main um, things Dan Schneider which has part been of Sam's body called and out for blah, blah, blah. is soliciting photos of children and their Wait. feet. Whether it's forcing pop superstar oh, Ariana Grande to suck a toe on camera, or it's Alexa what Nicholas's account of Dan soliciting feet pictures from children on the Zoe 101 set, huh? stories, videos, and pictures of children putting their feet on display due to Dan Schneider have followed the network for years. But in 2007, the solicitation of content from viewers was now being broadcast to millions of kids. When iCarly premiered, Dan Schneider excitedly said in an interview that iCarly is the first narrative show to collect content from the very kids who watch the show. He called iCarly the ultimate in reality TV programming, as the sitcom's premise was putting on a webcast with bits of outrageous videos that they collected from the actual web or online submissions. Hey, here's 17 reasons why iCarly.com rocks. It's way funny. Carly's hot. Freddy's hot. Spencer's insane. Sam's hilarious. The website is well designed. There's tons of things that you can click on. iCarly would even sometimes invite the stars of the collected videos onto the real TV show That's to cool. demonstrate Elise. their talents. The concept yeah, of incorporating funny. real kids into the iCarly I never knew that was real, to be honest. To be I thought that was all fake. As thousands of videos were submitted to the iCarly website, non-actor Simon gone. Bernal's milk squirting trick in the premiere episode seemed to have no, set the I remember this episode. I remember talents. This <laughs> Simon, who primarily just wanted to meet Miranda, said that after getting a cameo on iCarly, he was actually considering enrolling in acting classes. And that's something Dan Schneider said he anticipated when he created what he called a show within a show about a show. Schneider even said that everywhere he went, kids were always telling him they I want to be a star on TV. Now that Schneider had opened the floodgates to the public, they predicted a tidal wave of submissions from kids who want to get on nah, a TV show. show. With this, Dan Schneider proved to be a master of creating one of the most interactive and engaging TV shows to ever hit children's television. But years later, fans who are now adults look back at those fan submission videos with a different lens. The videos that made it onto the show were always really bizarre. Some of them could be considered a talent, but a lot were just of kids claiming they could fit their entire foot in their mouth or wiggling their toes right in front of the camera. What iCarly the was fuck? kind of just the beginning of Dan's this thing had a foot weird fetish? solicitation yes, content bro, I said that. What the fuck? He had a freakishly weird foot fetish, bro. Children's feet. As through the years, his requests would get even more direct and bizarre. The show Victorious would also also have a promotional yeah, interactive website saw. called The Slap that sort of functioned the same way as iCarly.com. But it was during the 2014 the iCarly spinoff show, Sam and Cat, where Dan Schneider's request of children's feet just became impossible to ignore. During this show, Dan not only solicited talents, but he actually asked children to write Sam and Cat tomorrow right on the bottom of your foot and take a picture and use Sam and Cat Saturday yeah, or retweet is and follow until our fingers get sore. That is weird. Fight Sam and Cat on the bottom of their feet. Hundreds of kids submitted photos of their feet publicly Whoa. to Dan Schneider on Twitter. Dan was using the show Sam and Cat's official Twitter account to make these requests, but also his personal Twitter has a lot of- <laughs> I think it's an until our fingers no, get sore. No, wait, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Oh yeah. my god. Yo, thank you for the reset, man. Weird guy. foot and- Niggas says voice toe. toe. Is this? Pick nah. this toe belongs to one of the stars on my shows. Whose toe is this? What the fuck? Nah, he had issues. The toe recently adorned with a special toe flower belongs to the sweet and hilariously talented Jeanette McCurdy. What, Carly like tickled see? Carly Carly tickled Sam's very unusual toes. If you have a moment, will you please name Sam's toes for us? What? Wait, video. Would you like to see Victoria Justice pour ketchup? Oh, oh yeah. Nigga, that sounds like some weird Hollywood black market nah, freak on shit, bro, nigga. Crazy, bro. <laughs> it just what the makes fuck? you wonder what this is or a nigga forty seven year old Dan Schneider bro. have in soliciting hundreds of photos of feet from children under the guise of it being for a show he created. And now they this was did all before real? the dangers of what? the internet were more publicized. Back when fans began submitting videos to iCarly, social media was pretty new and parents didn't really think twice in allowing their children to 
to roam freely on the internet. On top of that, iCarly was a website created no, I never meant for children. Thing. To this day, no yeah, one was. really knows with 100% certainty the motivation behind Dan Schneider creating such an interactive kids program that gave him access to request content from thousands upon thousands of children. We can really only speculate, but coupled with all of the Dan Schneider allegations through the years, it just feels icky. While the Disney Channel was experiencing its own renaissance with the smashing success of the High School Musical franchise, School Musical. it was clear they that Disney was the too. king of transforming they had, a young yep. child actor had had into been. a singing and dancing star. Nickelodeon saw this and they wanted a singing sensation of their own. With iCarly being the only live action show on Nick at the time, Nickelodeon would attempt to transform Miranda Cosgrove and Jeanette McCurdy into songstresses in their own right. Leave It All To Me is a song that Miranda performs for the theme song, actually, for iCarly. Give it up for my friend Drake Bell! I guessed it on the recording. So make it right. And that opened up a lot of doors for me because uh, it ended up charting on Billboard. And then before we knew it, all these record companies were... They charted on Billboard? And I believe it. Getting to I got like that. That's our song. Miranda would record multiple original songs for the iCarly soundtrack. That was a fire. That was a fire. I can play the song. I'm like, well, uh... And disgraced Dr. Luke. The moderate successes of Miranda's music career would propel the iCarly franchise leaps and bounds forward and would finally give them a horse in the race to compete against the Disney Channel juggernaut Hannah Montana. Miranda's songs, along with songs by One Direction, The Plain White Tees, Kesha, Katy Perry, and Leona Lewis would be featured on the show and the iCarly soundtrack. Miranda would also tour I to promote that. her projects and iCarly. Nigga, wasn't could... Michelle Obama on iCarly at one point? I could have swear like, so. like I the think president, so. one of the presidents so. was on there, bro. I think, uh, one of them, yeah. yeah. The hit 2011 Dancing Crazy Tour, but this tour would end abruptly, costing Miranda and her label millions. Balmerito Automotive Sky Fox is the scene of a nasty accident involving a tour bus and a semi tractor trailer on Interstate 70 in Fayette County, Illinois. TMZ is reporting that the bus, the tour bus, belongs to iCarly star Miranda Cosgrove. Damn. In August of 2011, Miranda was en route to Kansas when her tour bus crashed into a stopped semi truck. Miranda was laying in bed when the crash occurred, causing her to fly off the bed where she slammed into a wall, breaking her ankle Damn. in the process. The Damn. bus driver had to be airlifted to the hospital and Miranda's mom suffered a concussion. The tour, which Damn. still had 25 dates left, had to be canceled as Miranda needed surgery. Now, Miranda would wind up suing both the tour bus driver and the semi-truck driver for acting carelessly and for ruining her career. Miranda lost a million dollars in concert sales then shortly after the crash sony her record label dropped her as she wasn't Damn. touring right after losing her record deal she lost her lucrative i, I, I was gonna say i don't even recall her making music injuries Damn, i don't either i don't even remember that like intro song as much as two and a half song? million dollars yeah, i don't Miranda's know the intro song i'm not gonna lie very much derailed by this accident unfortunately we could not find the outcome of so the lawsuit watch, despite oh, the land. horrible circumstances surrounding the tour miranda still showed nickelodeon that they could make some headway in the music industry which paved the way for the hit show that would premiere two years after iCarly, Victorious. Now, while the show iCarly had excellent storylines and actual laugh out loud humor, which wasn't something that was very common for kids TV at the time. Oh, Freddie, your mom's looking for you. Something about a sick relative. What? I gotta go. I made that up so we'd leave. Why? Because I don't want Freddie to see me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I know these episodes are called. My mom says none of my relatives. <laughs> I got lied to these episodes are called. Uh, Schneider <laughs> used this leverage to sneak some less than savory jokes and storylines throughout the series. To start, let me take you back to the 90s. According to Reddit user Brian Robbins from Paramount and Head of Class, which he starred in with a younger Dan Schneider, they were both doing an interview together with Seventeen magazine when they were asked about advice to give to girls, to which Dan allegedly creepily replied with, wear bras that hook in the front. We love a challenge. 
According to this oh. Reddit user, multiple parents wrote into the magazine as primarily girls 12 to 14 were reading it, and the comment rubbed them the entirely wrong way. While I was unable to independently verify this quote as the Seventeen magazine archives aren't completely open, I was able to find something even Julia more disturbing. Going as far back as The Amanda Show, Dan Schneider had seemingly been paying homage to this disgusting comment. See, when what I searched the, the quote, fuck? bras that hook in the front with Dan Schneider's name, an entire slew of quotes from various episodes of his TV show dating all the way back to The Amanda Show were filled with the quote, bras that hook in the front. I hate bras Why that does hook he in love the front. If you're too lazy to reach behind your back, then maybe you should just stay home. You know, because seriously, is this too much to ask? Is that too much effort for you? Is it a lot of no, trouble? I don't think it is. Okay, Jade, what do you hate? The word panties, wet doorknobs, bras that hook in the front, the color yellow. I've always gotten A's in music. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, mm. what? Yo. I didn't catch that. Let me go back. What? Hold on. I didn't a catch to that. a D. Hold a to a D. I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it. The word panties, wet doorknobs, bras that hook in the front, the color yellow. I've always gotten A's in music. How does a person go from an A to a D? Happened to me in eighth grade. Yeah. Nah, that's insane, I don't get bro. It. Bro, she's talking about bra sizes, bro. Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wake up, baby. What's up? I was telling you that I'm upset about my brother, the bikini top. Well, I think that's fantastic. But he has this awesome life. Going on exotic vacations to Hawaii, hanging out on beaches, getting his picture taken. Oh, uh, you'd have to be pretty skinny to slide under that laser beam and not hit it. So which one of us is the flattest? I don't get it. Which one was which one of us is the what? The flattest. Flattest. Mm. But looking at my swimsuit. I'm not. You have a bug on your stomach. What? <laughs> she can't get her boobs in the hamburger. Those dumb boobs. I'll try not to poke a <laughs> hole in this with uh, my pointy bosoms. This would be one of the many exploitative and high sexualized jokes that would permeate iCarly. But I can't even begin to talk about the sexualization of iCarly without talking about the feet. Now, around 2014, when Dan Schneider oh my God, began I remember to be exposed that. across the internet, the viewers who grew up with his shows began to notice a very disturbing, alarming, and disgusting pattern. I remember that one Children's episode feet. where they was putting their feet in that fish tank, just moving out their feet. You're actually reading your book? <laughs> I am. I'm impressed. If a Dan Schneider show had a chance to put a foot on the screen, it most certainly would be there. Ew. What the fuck? I remember this episode. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah. He's like just yes. watching this shit, just giggling behind the screen. And this information like, began Ugh. to spread. There was no <laughs> denying the seemingly shady nature of Schneider's bakery. Watch me spank your daddy! What? Hey, yo, they ass is getting freaky, bro. <laughs> no. An avalanche of clips began being posted online. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the stuff. <sighs> Rubbing around. Ew. I don't need this bag of ice in my pants. Ew. A majority from the two shows the fuck? are Carly and nah, bro. <laughs> Tori, please pour ketchup all over your feet. Okay, what is wrong with people? Just do it. But that's not performing. Come on, just do it. No, the reflection. I, I, I don't want to get my feet. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, spread your toes, spread your toes, girl. This is like black I still market say this shit, is not bro. performing. Hi, hi, hi. Let's turn off some music. Make your feet dance. Yeah. Ew, this is so weird. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, I remembered. This is so sad. Can't 
believe I'm doing this. I remember this episode. Me too, me too. Since iCarly followed the wacky web show of the characters Carly and Sam, the sketches they did could really revolve around anything. And the whole thing back then was like being random. Remember like random dancing? Oh, you're random. Random, I'm random, like, oh, random dancing. Nah. <laughs> I gotta lie. That nigga was a weirdo, but he was a fucking genius thing. I gotta lie. Not for <laughs> real. I gotta lie, y'all. I'm gonna give it bro. He's a fucking genius. Thing back then was like being <laughs> random. Lie, I remember, I like, random there, I dancing. Dance oh, you're random. Me. I'm random. Like that was the cool thing to do. But right, when please. almost every other sketch <laughs> revolves around feet or bras, it seems a little less random. Noah Monk, the actor known for his portrayal of the cult classic character Gibby, came out and said the following. I was sort of, I mean, if that sh went on, I'm thinking like, that's devastating to me because I don't see Dan in that light, you know? So watching clips on YouTube of more than just having a foot fetish and shit of that is like crazy. But I mean, the foot fetish is like, okay, bro, come on. Like, I never really noticed that when I was 15 on the show. But of course, looking back in retrospect, it's like, okay, okay, end quote. Noah's character Gibby's main joke was that he took his shirt off. Noah has since spoken out about this, saying it felt wrong and like he was the butt of every joke. Anyway, the theme of feet, oh, bras, and toes Gibby was deep through iCarly. And while most of the iCarly stars haven't addressed the contents of the show, one was very clear to speak out about her negative experience as a child star. So we couldn't talk about iCarly without also talking about the horrific Nickelodeon career of best-selling author Jeanette McCurdy. Jeanette McCurdy would be cast to play the fan favorite bully and Carly sidekick, Sam Puckett. While Miranda Cosgrove's childhood stardom is only really documented through the viewing lens of Dan Schneider's camcorder, Jeanette McCurdy has written a detailed description of her experience as a child star with a cult following. Jeanette showcased extraordinary Did she talent. date a rapper or something? Uh, I think it was an NBA player. She did? And then, like, I think she, she, player she dated Andre Drummond. Yeah. And at a very young age. And her mother immediately forced her into work, taking her to audition after audition. Even if Jeanette was sick and under the weather, her mother would make her perform in hopes of securing her career in order to fund their life. Jeanette began her rise to stardom at only six years old. Cody, smile, smile. Hey, Cassidy, put down that sugar daddy. Got a sugar daddy. Like mother, like daughter, huh? Starting in 2000 with Matt Whoa. TV and shooting terribly traumatic shows like no. CSI what? and that Order, was crazy. here's a disturbing what? short film. Oh, whoa. Whoa, that what? was fucking whoa. crazy. What? what the fuck? Jeanette released that demonstrates her career at the time. Come on, you can do what it. What do you think, Parisa? Come on, Josie. <laughs> and cut. Wow. What the fuck are you, bro? It's like I lost you in that character. It's like a documentary about how her mom treated her and shit. Mm. It's like you weren't even my daughter. <laughs> it's like her on a TV show. Which is good. It's good. Yeah. I don't know what show this is or movie. I don't know what the fuck this is. This she eventually thing. switched to a more light-hearted like acting career, career, truly shining as the comedic genius she is in the gender swap episode of Malcolm in the Middle, and eventually landing a role on the hit Dan Schneider show, Zoe 101. This is where Jeanette would get her start in the Nickelodeon machine. And as the story goes, she would eventually land a spot on the hit show iCarly, but unlike her co-stars, Jeanette doesn't remember the experience fondly. First was her mother's severe abuse. She taught Jeanette how to calorie restrict by 12 years old and hopes for Jeanette to look younger and land more roles. What? I think my mom encouraged and conditioned my anorexia because both she thought she hella that it would now. in some ways help my career and also because it served her she is goal of though. keeping me young and under her influence. She describes how her mother would give her showers and touch her invasively what? until she was a teenager. She referred to them as medical exams on your private parts. Yes. This was the hardest part of the book for me to write about. On the outside, I was doing a lot of the performing, the tap dancing of like the, the smile and the showing up and landing on my mark and I'm gonna 
just do what I need to do and be this, you know, happy-go-lucky Nickelodeon kid. Oh. My name is Samantha Puckett. I'm from Seattle, and I love fried chicken. <laughs> but inside, I was hurting. It was painful. I was angry. I felt unsupported. You pull back the curtain on child stardom. It is not a pretty picture. Not as I see it, no. What were the pitfalls Damn. of child fame? You're playing a, a, an adult's game. You're in an adult's world, and you don't recognize that. You're incapable of being on that level, but you are confused and you think that you are. And I think it really leads to um, stunted personal development. And while she was going through all of that, Dan Schneider would further get his hits in on Jeanette, making her character hungry and fiend for food all the time. Meanwhile, she was actively starving herself so severely that it began completely messing so with her So she was mocking, she was mocking her? She the creator to maybe write less lines about food, but she was met with nothing but pushback. Jeanette described another disturbing oh, scene in no. her book where the creator would hold wardrobe fittings and asked for, quote, multiple bikini options. If Jeanette what spoke up fuck? about how uncomfortable she felt her mother met her with everyone wants what you have and so the abuse would continue now this was only the tip of the iceberg of what went down on the iCarly set Jeanette describes another chilling story in which the creator gives her a massage and offers her alcohol. Deep dive. Look Jeanette at the went into further detail describing Hi, Dan Schneider's alleged verbal abuse saying quote I've seen the creator make grown men and women cry with his insults and degradation. The creator knows how to make someone feel worthless. At the end of the day, I love it when the cast gets sassy with me because I get to write all the scripts with some very talented writers, but I get to, I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. When I could buy- What the fuck? No, this thing was evil. They finally filmed. Carly had her tearful end with her friends and the show ended right? Well, Dan Schneider had an entirely new concept in his back pocket. One that seems like fan fiction, but would actually come to fruition. Mr. Dan Schneider, who created and executive produced every one of the best thing Looney shows ever is- a Damn, how long was they putting on this act so for, bro? Wait. I'm so excited to be working with him. And we're starting- Why is all this shit coming out in 2024, Ted? That's what I don't know, nigga. I'm so pumped. You know what I mean? Like, I anything about it. Plot-wise, here's the thing. I know nothing about it. I don't know my character. I don't know Nigga, 10 concept, years, 15 like, years? I'm, I'm like, Dan's in, Nickelodeon's in. Are you kidding me? Of course I'm in. After Nickelodeon saw the natural end of no, iCarly and the complete so. abrupt and shady end of Victorious, Dan Schneider knew this generation of television was almost over, but not before one final spinoff. In two days, it's World Premiere of a new show, Sam and Cat. Oh, Sam and Cat was trash. Like Neither. Did y'all fuck with Sam and Cat? The world premiere of Sam and Cat. See, The That's Amanda Show tough. was a spinoff of all that. Drake and Josh was a spinoff from The Amanda Show. iCarly was a spinoff from Drake and Josh. But none of them retained the same characters. Just the same actors, kind of like American Horror Story. But all of that was about to change. Jeanette McCurdy is stating in her book, I initially got a development deal with Nickelodeon for my own show a few years ago. I thought it was going to be just that. My own show. The harrowing tale of a brassy juvenile delinquent turned school counselor. Now, it's some half baked two-hander, referring to what eventually became of her spin-off. Now, Ariana Grande, singer, songstress, global pop sensation, and actress behind Cat Valentine, and Jeanette McCurdy would agree to sign on to the all-new Schneider's Bakery hit show, Sam and Cat. The synopsis reading, Sam Puckett, Jeanette McCurdy, has been touring the West Coast by motorcycle and stops in Los Angeles. She witnesses Cat Valentine, Ariana Grande, being thrown into the back of a garbage truck and rest rescues her. They become friends, and Kat convinces her to become roommates after Kat's grandmother moves to her retirement home. This Wait, y'all, this is so a conservatorship ass. push. <laughs> to make money, rather Listen, than getting traditional after-school jobs, they form an after-school babysitting business that leads them what? into a series of comical adventures. Now, the show would debut to 4.2 million viewers, and naturally, that was a This success. was a chick flick. But I feel like girls long. like this show, See, chat. I ain't gonna lie. Scenes, talks of salaries, rivalries, and feuds would set a premature fate for the hit children's TV show. Jeanette detailing in her book, I grew up in Garbage Grove, in a hoarder house with a cancerous mom who constantly wept about not being able I to afford lie. rent and utility. I had the biggest crush on, on fucking Cat back then, nigga. Nigga, Ariana Grande was my crush for the longest when I was in like fucking sixth grade, seventh grade. Like, no bullshit. Like, real shit, bro. Like,
bills. Ariana grew up in Boca Raton, Florida, an incredibly wealthy, idyllic town with a healthy mom who could buy her whatever she wanted, whenever she wanted. Gucci bags, fancy vacations, Chanel outfits. I booked Whoa. two features during iCarly that I had to turn down because the iCarly team wouldn't write me out of the episodes to go shoot them. The week where I was told Ariana would not be here at all and that they would write around her absence this episode by having her character be locked in a box. Are you kidding me? So I have to turn down movies while Ariana's off whistle toning at the Billboard Music Awards? Fuck this. If I wasn't such a good uh, sport crazy. to begin with, I wouldn't be in this predicament in the first place. I wouldn't be on the shri show saying these shri lines on the shri set with this shri hairstyle. Maybe my life would be entirely different right now. I fantasize about it being different, but it's not different. It's this. This is what it is. Ariana misses work in pursuit of her music career while I act with now, Ariana box. Grande was the I'm biggest, is, is one of the biggest pop stars today now. Her. That's fucking Jealous crazy. Jealous of her. This jealousy was actually pretty earned. See, back on iCarly, because Miranda Cosgrove was bringing such an audience to this new spinoff project, she would set an industry standard for the highest paid child actor on all of TV, setting the bar at $180,000 per episode. Needless to say, given the context clues about her upbringing, Jeanette wasn't making nearly that much on iCarly. That is, until Sam and Kat. See, rumors of Jeanette McCurdy not making as much as her Sam and Cat co-star Ariana Grande were prevalent. This is the common belief as to why the show ended, as Jeanette reportedly didn't feel as valued as Ariana, thus causing them to feud. However, Ariana insisted that they were paid the same exact amount per episode, which had to have been a raise from the measly $9,000 per episode Ariana was allegedly okay. making before on Victorious. According to Jeanette, Nickelodeon also reportedly told her that she would be able to direct her own episode. However, this never came to fruition. Jeanette writing, I realized that I've been foolish. I believed that these people would do what they said they would. Now that I've shown up to work every day, been a professional, swallowed my anger, and carried a show for almost 40 episodes, now that they've gotten what they've wanted out of me, they're taking away the very reason why I was doing all of those things in the first place. She continued on, Ariana is at the stage in her career where she's popping up on Damn. every third under 30 list that exists. Damn, she's and getting I'm good at the stage in my career <laughs> where my team is excited that I'm the new face of Rebecca Bonbon, bon, a tween clothing line featuring a cat with her tongue sticking out, sold exclusively at Walmart. I frequently make the mistake of comparing my career to Ariana's. I can't help it. So if not the pay, why did Sam and Cat end so quickly? Well, Jeanette hinted at it in her web series she released only a year after Sam and Cat ended. <laughs> Holy d balls. Sarah Bronson. I haven't seen you in like, I don't know, a week. Oh my God, Who is I'm that? supposed to be you. Ariana Grande been tech? such a long day. I've been to the facialist and the manicures and the nutritionist. He is like, like, you even, like what is like, like, I can't. Can't what? I think it's just like to too much. <laughs> Self, see moments. Okay, so how have you been? What have you been up to now that your show's been canceled? That's a super bummer, right? Um, yeah, it sucks. I've just been- Anyway, I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off, except not like a chicken because I'm vegan. I'll be. Oh, you're <laughs> vegan? Oh my God. Oh my God, I didn't tell you. It's like the biggest change in my life. It's like the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh my God, what was I saying? Uh, who knows? <gasps> oh, my music, right, that was it. Okay, so I have this idea for a music video. So just like, let me know what you think. However, since then, she has gone into great detail in her book, stating the true breaking point of her Nickelodeon career. Ariana came whistle toning in with excitement because she had spent the previous evening playing charades at Tom Hanks' house. I don't know what that means. Uh -huh. This was the moment I broke. I couldn't take nigga, it anymore. Nigga, she wasn't anymore. playing charades, nigga. Performances and magazine covers. <laughs> Fuck out of here, nigga. She wasn't playing but charades, nigga. Family game at National Treasure, two-time Academy Award winner, and six-time nominee Tom Hanks' house. I'm done. 
I didn't like her. I couldn't like her. Pop star success, <laughs> I could handle. But hanging out with Sheriff Woody, with fucking Forrest Gump, this has gone too far. So now, every time she misses work, it feels like a personal attack. Every time something exciting happens to her, I feel like she robbed me of having that experience Justin myself. Bieber, Nicki Minaj, and with that, damn. reports of Sam and Cat ending because one of oh, the yeah, actors she did date Big Sean. Did she not? Ever again after what a verbally the abusive fuck? conversation she did date Big began Sean. popping up everywhere. And Sam and Cat was quietly canceled. But not before the network nah, would attempt to give Jeanette McCurdy what she refers to oh, as $300,000 in hush money, stating that because Whoa. Sam and Cat ended prematurely, she was Whoa. offered 300 they try to offer three hundred thousand dollars in hush money. No, we got shit. Like only three hundred k is insane. Dollars in hush money, stating that because Sam and Cat ended prematurely, she was offered three hundred thousand dollars severance. But as always with the creator, there was a catch: she was to never speak about her experiences on those Nickelodeon sets. Jeanette McCurdy Whoa. refused. Thus, Ariana yeah. transitioned into a pop superstar, and Jeanette would begin the healing process of her mother's death. Dan Schneider, on the other hand, would be given two more TV shows and honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Kids' Choice Award. We love thank you, you so much, and we love you, Jeanette. And thank you so much for this. We love you, Dan Schneider, Jeanette. Thank you, fans. You're awesome. Speaking of Dan Schneider, we would like to introduce you to somebody we all know and love who's going to tell you a little more about him. Stars from all that, The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, and I, Carly. Dan, we love you. Thank you so much, dude. We are so happy to be here. Oh, it's our time. He was using them. That yes. crazy. You not only changed all of our lives, you changed Kids TV. It's hard to put into words what Dan has done for all of us. And all of you, nigga Drake. The niggas was yo. The niggas were essaying you, bro. You should have been came out. You out well, there can't, and can't all. Because, like, you don't understand. Like, I mean, you don't know like what they were going through their, their actual brain when that shit happened. Like, nah, I know that, but I'm just saying, nigga, these are all victims, nigga. Like, I mean, yeah, but I'm saying, like, you can't like just say the old just was come out instantly. Like, over the world, so we'll just say thank you, Dan. So it is our great honor to present the first ever Nickelodeon Lifetime Achievement Award to a man who has been making all of us laugh for the past two decades. Put your hands together for the one and only Dan Schneider. And listen, I gotta thank my, my friends who first invited me no, into this good crazy actors, Nickelodeon nigga. They're hiding for this long, nigga. Brian Robbins and Albie they Hanks, are good thank actors, you guys for bringing nigga. me here. You know how much I love comedy and TV and, and making funny stuff. And I feel so lucky that I get to spend my days they hanging out with scared. people Hell as yeah. talented and hilarious and wonderful and as all of you. Like, now, did you notice my career, anything like... off about that clip? Yeah. Jeanette McCurdy and Miranda Cosgrove are notably missing. And for the next portion of this video, I'll be reading a very revealing blind item. Now remember, this was left anonymously and has not been independently verified, so please take it with a grain of salt. However, the post alleges that at the Kids' Choice Awards on Saturday night, Dan Schneider was honored with a lifetime achievement award. Despite him receiving the award, two of the biggest stars he has produced in the past decade, Jeanette McCurdy and Miranda Cosgrove, both skipped the show. Like with most award shows on Nickelodeon and MTV, the winners are announced long before the telecast. This ensures that big stars who show up get an award. Jeanette actually received more votes than the eventual winner, Ariana Grande, but was told she would not be receiving the award because of her photo leak scandal. She was also- What? Her news got leaked? Yeah, yeah. Y'all remember that? I don't remember that shit. When was that? Also told that if Sam and Cat returns, a link. which is Nigga, doubtful she's like 16 at this point, that her contract would not be renewed. Dan Schneider could have saved her, but chose not to. He is more concerned with looking after himself and finding fresh female talent. It wasn't completely Jeanette new. boycotted the show, and Miranda boycotted as well. Even though she was told she won an award. When Jeanette asked Ariana to also boycott the show, Ariana allegedly refused. Jeanette immediately unfollowed Ariana on Twitter and was a no-show at the awards. Now, what adds even more to this blind item is that Jeanette McCurdy actually released a statement on Twitter following the KCAs and why she didn't attend, saying, a lot of you guys are asking why I didn't attend the Kids' Choice Awards. I wish I could explain everything as thoroughly as I would like to, but unfortunately, a simpler explanation is all I can, right? Let me read this. 
But unfortunately, it's something that I can write. I was put in an uncomfortable, compromising, unfair situation. And I had to look out for me. I chose not to go because sticking up for what is right is fair. And that's what my mom always taught me. Damn. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. These are all victims, like bro. That's but unfortunately, a simpler explanation is all nigga, Nickelodeon I can write. I was bro. put in an uncomfortable, nigga, we should all sue Nickelodeon, nigga, because they poisoned us with this. <laughs> Run right, Jack. And we should I all sue them, nigga. For me. I chose to not go because sticking up for what is right <laughs> and what is fair is what my mom taught me is always the most important thing. I want to thank those of you who have reached out with kind words of support, McCurdians and Arianators alike. No matter who or what you support, I believe in supporting fairness first. If you have done that, thank you. Now, a lot of people thought this was about her photo scandal because this did actually coincide with a nude photo leak. However, she tweeted afterwards saying, my previous tweet has nothing to do with pics leaked. Oh, you guys, lol. It has to do with how Nickelodeon treated me. That's all. This was the beginning of the end for Dan Schneider. See, while Sam and Cat was airing, mm. YouTube videos and different forums detailing the abuse uses of Dan Schneider began popping up everywhere. For years, new revelations and salacious clips would surface on social media and call into question all of our innocent childhoods. That's when multiple blind items began popping up, further clarifying the story. Again, these are anonymous items that were not independently verified, so take the following information with a grain of salt. However, it is from Crazy Days and Nights, which is the same blind item site that exposed Harvey Weinstein and a plethora of other troubled executives. Now, this blind item allegedly describes a meeting between Dan Schneider and the owner of Viacom, at the time Sumner Redstone, aka Dan Schneider's boss. Now, this blind item was released just months before Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon announced his resignation. Dan is allegedly referred to in this as the producer, and allegedly Sumner Redstone as the protector. The blind item what starts with fuck? tick tock, tick tock. That clock is ticking loudly as a chain of events and metaphorical deal with Dude, the devil said, we can break down like, what, this entire media corporation and their now struggling <laughs> studio within the coming year. This has been a long time coming and is thankfully now, about to come to an shit end creepy, for the though, perpetrator bro. of some of the modern entertainment industry's worst long-time institutional abuses of underage actresses. The item continues, many people in Hollywood have been waiting to see when this producer at this cable network is going to be called out, publicly accused or charged for his many years of abuse behind the scenes. Many have wondered why, with so many others being brought down, how he's managed to escape almost un unscathed. It's because of his protector. Remember, they're alleging this as Sumner Redstone, the deceased owner of Viacom. His protector is the mega wealthy big boss of the studio and corporate parent, and he wields a lot of power over many types of media in both Hollywood and New York. Many years ago, the producer got himself in serious trouble over his perverted abuses of several of his actresses. Not just those he abused himself, but those he encouraged. His writers, what? directors, and co-producers to sexually abuse. This was not a one-time thing, but an ongoing, constant pattern, which led those actresses to jukes, self-destruction, self-abuse, mutilation, destroyed dreams, wasted careers, damaged families, and even insanity. Made more disgusting by the complicity and apathy of the parents, momagers, and guardians who just wanted fame and money. Also that some jolly perverts could get their rooks off living out their sick, unfulfilled teenage dreams. At that time, the protector still had most of his marbles and was going to live forever. Many believe he still may, although he's now alive in name only, and the flames are lapping at his legs daily. I don't know if they're talking about his estate, but current day 2023, and also at the time of this writing, Sumner Redstone's daughter is actually running the company, and that is the parent company of Viacom. The blind item continues on. Back then, he still had his iron grip on his business, talking about the protector, Sumner Redstone. Where she's the CEO, and you're the CEO? I'm the CEO. She's you won't even give her the CEO job? No. She's your daughter. I know, but that's the way I control your daughter? Viacom, no, Viacom and CBS by yeah, controlling but it's your the family. stock. I tell you what. No. You want to give away what you have to your family? Be my guest. I'm fine. Damn. Fine. That's. I think it's ruthless. The That's the way you're supposed to do that. One generation. No, you're not. What? I'm still very active. I work very hard. I travel the world for Viacom. I'm not about to give up control.
And he's never been afraid to sue, threaten, harass, or destroy others as his favorite sport. Back when the abuses emerged as whispers of the corporation, the executives and the protector sat down with his corporate bean counters and realized the massive cash cow this producer was for them. Huge, very huge and big in Bro, every what? way. In fact, probably one of the biggest revenue generators in the corporate parent's entire history, especially in the coveted target demographic for ads, merch, and licensing, which is kids TV. When that much is at stake, they don't want to rock the boat or kill the golden goose. Anyway, on the other hand, it is a public corporation, and that means things can get leaked and revealed just through statements and financial reports. What then evolved was a corporate game of chess that nobody could imagine. The producer was no dummy, so he personally hired investigators to provide Risa. ammo for his case. He then hired top financial experts Gangly. to lay out the revenue he and his cronies represented to the corporation both in the past and in future revenues. So when the protector summoned him, the producer showed the protector a huge financial report to validate his power and worth to the bottom line. Then he showed a massive dossier of files going back 50 years of the powerful protector's own misdeeds. From New York to Hollywood to Boston to London, a trail of abuses, perversions, thefts from his company, stealing from his own family, and even outright felonies. By the time he got down what the list the to fuck? mention offshore banking, the protector knew he'd met someone on his level. Thus, the two twisted men forged a strategy and agreement to protect each other and the corporation. The producer surrendered his very expensive background report, and the protector agreed to make all those pesky abuse with whispers go away. They also agreed to blame another big corporate executive within the corporation if anything ever did leak out, or set him up as a fall guy. The protector even targeted one of his corporate underlings to shoulder the blame to, so he could claim ignorance. None of this was simple, instant, and was not cheap or easy, but the perverted producer was smart enough to have limited potential witnesses by keeping his whoops, abuses down to he said, she said. And for more than a decade, in the pre-Cosby and pre-Harvey days, a reporter, lawyer, or cop wouldn't accuse in such instances without hard proof. Parents were paid off in huge amounts as in Jesus never having Christ. to work again amounts that cover cars, college, tuition, That's not worth homes, it if your and kids all they want abused, for now. Bro. The parents and managers who quote, played ball and went along with it, they were well rewarded. Not just with big payoffs, but production deals, television shows, feature films, and even music careers. Many of the adults were even bribed with corporate stock. The victims were told they, quote, had no choice and had to accept the deals or These they themselves victims, could bro. get That's in trouble. Sad. So all those actresses and people had to do, keep quiet, keep smiling, keep doing photo ops, and support the brands, shows, and projects with positive PR. The best part for the producer and protector, they managed to make even more money off of even those cover-up deals by making new shows starring once unknown backing players who had been abused. Like two shows that starred the same actress and on and on it went leaving a trail of money and destroyed lives in their wake as the years passed by however times i was very stupid i found out how old she was yeah changed victims became emboldened and struggled to find a voice and old people get older sicker and lose their last few marbles some even die and pass on while sumner redstone died in 2020 this blind item was written in 2018 so any dead executive that they're referring to is most likely that of brad gray the ceo of paramount who died only one year before this blind item was written anyway the blind item continues those girlfriends of the protector get greedy and sue for inclusion in the will. Family members get scorned, disheartened, and others fight and claw to be named as the new boss, as this one has. Which brings us to the present day, and the earth now quaking beneath the feet of the corporation, studio, network, the protector, and definitely the producer. Several of the victims have begun to talk to lawyers who smell blood in the water. The big executive fall guy, he passed away. They wanted to blame it all on him, since he's dead and can't defend himself. Only only two big problems. One, in a major corporate shuffle in the past year or two, several executive board members got pushed out, and they want revenge 
badly. Two, one of the biggest victims of the producer has a lot of proof against him. Irrefutable proof that can bring the whole house down on them all. And that's the end of the blind item. Now, only six months after this blind item was posted, Nickelodeon prematurely cut ties with Schneider's Bakery. Now, don't get me wrong, this should have happened a long time ago. However, there was an ongoing agreement still in place for Dan Schneider's shows that were running at the time, Game Shakers and Henry Danger. However, that's when I stopped watching Nickelodeon. The Game Shakers Yo, I ain't gonna lie. And it was allegedly Henry Danger is so purposes. trash. I don't know. Anyway, Nickelodeon <laughs> and Schneider's Bakery show? released a joint statement following Dan Schneider's ousting from the company and a huge $7 million payout. They stated the following. Following many conversations together about next directions and future opportunities, Nickelodeon and our longtime creative partner Dan Schneider slash Schneider's Bakery have agreed to not extend the current deal. Since several Schneider's Bakery projects are wrapping up, both sides agreed that this is a natural time for Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery to pursue other opportunities and projects. Dan and his Schneider's Bakery team have created a string of long-lasting, groundbreaking hits over the years, including iCarly, Drake and Josh, Victorious, Keenan and Kel, and the current number one hit show on Nickelodeon, Henry Danger. The statement continued, we thank Dan and his Schneider's Bakery producers, executives, and social media team for their immeasurable contributions to Nickelodeon. And we wish them the oh, best one right in their now. future endeavors. And Dan and the Schneider's Bakery are proud of the work they did with Nickelodeon and will always remain big fans of the network. Years would pass by since iCarly and Sam and Cat aired, but the public interest would actually only increase. After iCarly ended, oh, Miranda love. Cosgrove went to college and led as normal of a life as possible and going to the University of Southern California. Although once she finished school, she realized she didn't like anything more than acting. So she returned as the voice of Margo in the wildly successful Despicable Me series. But iCarly and their fans would rage on. With reruns still running nonstop on Nickelodeon, public interest interest in yeah, iCarly only group. Yeah. So in 2020, Paula Kaplan called Miranda Cosgrove with the opportunity of a lifetime. Paula brought up the idea of an iCarly revival. Yeah, did anybody so watch this shit? TikTok's I never watched this shit. Bustle writing at the time. At first, I the watched iCarly was pitched as another kid's show, with Cosgrove's titular character and her older brother, Spencer, running a hype house of sorts in their Seattle apartment to raise a new generation of influencers inspired by Carly's original web show. Sort of following the reboot cycle of Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World or That's So Raven in Raven's Home, aka being as child-friendly as possible while still retaining some of the original audience. However, Miranda Cosgrove never wanted this, saying, I don't think that any of us would be up for that idea. What excited me about doing iCarly again was getting to put the characters in situations that we couldn't show before. Following roughly 50,000 hours of phone conversations with the returning cast, Miranda Cosgrove asked Viacom, CBS, and the production company Awesomeness TV, owned by Brian Robbins, the man Dan Schneider started his career with, if the reboot could be an adult show geared towards the audience that watched the original. Saying, as a quote, huge Lizzie McGuire fan who was shit. bummed when Disney Plus's revival they even was watch one shows episode of over this creative shit? disagreements, Miranda Cosgrove knew it could be difficult to get the team to believe in the idea of a mature iCarly. But to her surprise, they were almost immediately on board to craft a grown-up version of the show. Miranda saying, Hopefully, iCarly will do well, and maybe they'll let Lizzie McGuire be what it was supposed to be, because I would love to see that. Now, what iCarly did correctly and differently from any other TV show revival thus far is they put the titular character in the role of executive producer. This made for an authentic and original approach, but with an edge. See, Miranda Cosgrove's involvement in the reboot was absolutely vital to the show's overall vibe. The first thing Miranda did was call up each of the stars of iCarly, Jerry Trainer, Nathan and Crass, and yes, Jeanette McCurdy. While Jerry and Nathan were both open to the children's show centered around a hype house, Jeanette said absolutely not from the jump, making oh it clear God. that she was ashamed of the scenes that Schneider's Bakery had so happily produced, and that she didn't look back at it fondly, being quoted saying, my whole childhood no, and adolescence were very exploited. There were cases where people had the best intentions and maybe didn't know what they were doing, and also cases where they did. 
they knew exactly what they were doing. Now, this may have been what prompted the release of Jeanette's book, as she released the book only two years after turning down the role. However, when news dropped that an adult reboot of iCarly would be coming and Jeanette announced that she wasn't involved, the iCarly fans lost their minds. Jeanette wrote, I don't Yo, think the reboot realistically lead to other be opportunities gay. because if the performer in the reboot hasn't done significant work in between, the reboot yeah, just serves as a reminder of that. It further entrenches the performer in the role the that they initially got known for at least a decade prior, a role which likely keeps their career w. stuck, not flourishing. There are things more important than money and my mental health and happiness fall under that category. As an actor, you can't control which agents want to represent you, what roles your agent submits for you, which auditions you get, what callbacks you get, what roles you get, whether you get famous, how the media portrays you, and so on. So much of my life has felt so Damn out of my control some. for so long, and I'm done with that being my reality. I want my life to be in my hands, not in eating disorders, or casting directors, or in agents, or my mom's mine. When confronted with Jeanette's stories during the promotion for the new iCarly, Miranda told the New York Times, When you're young, you're so in your own head, you can't imagine that people around you are having much harder struggles. In a softer voice, she added, You don't expect things like that from the person in the room who's making everyone laugh. Damn. That's it? The iCarly revival would debut to great reviews and would be Last the most critically seconds. acclaimed kids' television revival of all time. While the iCarly's revival viewership numbers were never publicized, the show is clearly a smash hit. Currently, at the time of this video, airing its third season with no signs of stopping, the 2007 yeah, yeah. original version shit, of iCarly would launch an success, entire it, era like, of influencers, uh, streamers, and TikTokers into the ether. And the new definitely. iCarly absolutely encapsulates the energy of modern-day YouTube and social media, thus making a classic television show burn on for even more generations to come. Obviously the memoir that came out with Jeanette McCurdy. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you all about that. Have you spoken with her since um, the memoir came out? Can you empathize with her? And what is the vibe on set to make her know that she that way? Because that shit's spooky, bro. It got canceled? Like younger years, but have you Chai, it got canceled? Do you, do you talk to her? I, I did talk to her. I read it immediately and well, I talked well, to her and it's heartbreaking, but it's also brilliant. Yeah, me thinking we was really watching the speak off. Uh, for her being able to speak her truth. No. And, <laughs> and I talked with her about it and I said exactly that. I was like, you know, because it's it, it, it's heartbreaking, but she's very strong and very perceptive. And you <laughs> can see it in the writing, how smart she is. And, uh, you know, that's stuff she's going to deal with for her whole life. Hmm. Is that a W W documentary? It was alright. It was a good video. It was alright. It was a good video. You, you gotta you gotta watch the quiet on set though. For yo, the quiet I can't watch quiet on set on stream. Maybe kick. Maybe kick. Yeah, when you do your kick. Why, what, what was quiet on set? Did, did did they miss any detail that was already in here or no? This was just based on iCarly. They're talking about like the whole, the whole Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon generally, like the whole thing. Nigga. Yeah. Nigga, I believe it, nigga. <laughs> like, like, I was talking about they tell it all. What did they say? They're like going to detail. Them NDAs was uh he was basically like sexually harassing some of the women on set. On it was sexual discrimination. Obviously they did the foot fetish. And then it was talking about like how kids were like there was like dirty like sexual jokes on the kids shows like they was doing cum shots and oh, they had wow. yeah it was real shit it was too weird. it was too weird i mean spongebob just like... watch the clips of it who got it this one says the dark side of disney channel we can watch this next stream check you want to watch the next stream and there was three predators on set so it wasn't even one nigga them freak off was real where's the clips of what is it called? Quiet on set clips. Quiet on set documentary clips. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. Real shit, bro. I feel, I feel bad for for Drake Bell, bro.
Wait, Dan Schneider responded? Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I response. This is on the news channel. Bro, he was using Tebow. He was doing what? He was using Tebow as a fucking questionnaire. The people who ask questions, like Tebow from My Carly. The nigga who sell bagels? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> bro, come smoothie. on, bro. Like, yes. come on, bro. <laughs> nigga was putting anything on a stick. Anything on a stick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nigga was like, Yo, Max LT, thank you for the sub, bro. Story, particularly about the alleged Damn. abuse some child actors suffered at the hands of showrunner do. Dan Snyder. Dan's treatment of people on your shows was an open secret. So my lawyer filed complaints, gender discrimination, hostile work environment, harassment, and it was so devastating. How safe can any kids be in that environment? There would be even bigger problems down the line with actual pedophiles on set. Wow. Multiple former child actors have spoken out in the documentary, including actor Drake Bell, who says he was sexually assaulted by his former dialogue coach, Brian Peck. There was also allegations against Jason Handy, a production assistant. Joining us to talk about this, film director Sean Welling, an advocate for- Now, them freak-offs is real. Eduardo Lopez de Casa, glad to have you here on The Factor. Thank you. Eduardo, Thank you're you. not surprised by this. This yeah. is what those who are looking to victimize children, they gravitate towards. Exactly, and what is so horrible about this docu series that has come out is just the realization that Hollywood has not learned from its history with child actors like Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, and, and Natalie Wood, Corey Feldman, Corey Hyman. Uh, they have not learned their lesson, and they're actually protecting the people that are molesting these children. Yo, this shit is so disgusting and sad, bro. I'm not gonna lie, bro. the parents are bad too. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. And now I, I never saw why people didn't want you to watch like Nickelodeon shows, but now I see why, gang. Like now I, I see why, gang. Like, you feel me? Like the parents are just as bad as the people doing that shit because they're allowing it. Bro, you know, you know what's so crazy? I knew shit was really fishy. Once they announced SpongeBob was gay. Cause yo, once yo I believe that shit. Wait, SpongeBob was moved? SpongeBob is gay. You ain't yeah, know that? Yeah, you ain't know that? They came out and was like, oh, he's gay. Damn, but it's Wait, Chad, why y'all spamming question marks? Chad, y'all didn't know SpongeBob was gay? They admitted they said that shit a couple years ago. Okay, okay so I have a question. Like, so you <laughs> yes. Okay, hold on. So you think SpongeBob was cracking up after? Bro. Look, nah, bro. I always thought that nigga was straight and had a crush on Sandy, bro. Let's not do that. I thought he had a crush on Sandy too. But look, or or um, what's that girl's name? Uh, Mr. Krabs' daughter, uh, Pearl. Pearl. Yeah, bro. Y'all ain't see this? Nickelodeon reveals that SpongeBob is gay. Fuck. Look, Nickelodeon confirms that SpongeBob is gay. Nickelodeon celebrated Pride Month by announcing that SpongeBob SquarePants is gay. The kids' channel gay. took to Twitter yesterday to share a popular character is a member of the LGBTQ community writing, celebrating whatever. <laughs> celebrating Pride weird. with the... Man, what? Bro, this they is put that shit. Bro, they put that shit out their ass, wait. bro. Yeah, yeah, they doing anything. It's, it's a thing. marketing tactic. Like, bro, didn't nobody give... It's a fucking sponge. Let's Bro. be real. I'm making a sponge move. Too. Like, this shit ain't doing anyway. It said, it said, the nigga from Henry Danger, which was written by Dan Schneider, was gay. Korra from Avatar, the last, the Legend of Korra was gay. That's Get that a, freaky oh, weird shit off the set, nigga. Bro. That's false because Korra, and what well, she had a crush on what's called uh, Aang. Crush on Aang? What are you talking about? Nigga, this, Avatar. I'm talking about the new Avatar, not Katara, nigga. Oh, I'm talking oh, about the yeah. Avatar after Aang. Nah, they oh. saying anything. They just trying shit, bro. Literally. They 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 trying to appeal to people. Nigga, no, because they lost hella Literally. ratings after this. They lost hella ratings. Yeah, because nigga, like what the fuck, bro? Is SpongeBob or just SpongeBob? Like Nigga don't yeah. I'm supposed to know everything. I don't know. Get, get yeah. that freaky weird shit out the you know, set. Nigga, they said that SpongeBob was on some was some freak offs too, nigga. I know you see that shit, nigga. Nigga, they said, I was not on no freak nigga, they said SpongeBob was participating in them freak offs, nigga. Nigga, they said they said it was hidden, they said it was hidden messages. 
all types of shit in the show. I and mean, yeah, you. I mean, one no, of the million hidden yeah, messages was... is the Krusty Krab is in the bikini bottom. Like, that's already a dirty ass message. Hey, this is my God. It's in the freak offs, nigga. <clears throat> Who knows? <laughs> oh, no, bro. Nickelodeon is. They cooked. Disney nuts. Huh. Nah, Disney is next, but they they said it was all all on Quiet on Set. They said I heard Quiet on Set was for every kid's show. Like, I heard they were exposing it at all. Like Cartoon Network and every brand. Nigga, I ain't gonna lie, nigga. I pray ain't nothing happens to him. I honestly I can't think of anything from Cartoon Network that may have been like a hidden message. I mean, I mean, maybe Adult Swim, but that was literally for adults. Adult right? Swim, nigga, that, that's adult. not even hidden no more. They putting that shit out there. Yeah, Wait, what? What they do with Adult Swim, bro? Robot Adult Chicken was on Adult Swim. Yeah, yeah. nigga, I, I told exactly. I bet, they, they don't got no hidden message. They just putting that shit out bro, there. Bro, I knew Cartoon Network funny. was on some freaky shit whenever Total Drama Island came out. Nigga, everybody, oh, yeah. Nah, nah, Total bro, yeah. Shit. bro, everybody <laughs> knows that Total Drama Island was not supposed to be on Cartoon Network. Nigga, that shit was supposed to be on Adult Swim. Nigga, I even knew that as a fucking teenager. Nigga, that shit was freaky.